Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to create sprayable gels and lotions when using the right type of materials. Before I get started, I've had a lot of comments from people asking, can I make sure I use materials that even small brands can access? And I just wanted to let you know that where I can do that, I will do that for you. But there are certain cases where you need special materials to create certain product forms or types of performance. This would be one example where if you don't use the right type of materials, you won't get a sprayable end product. So where I can use materials that even small brands can access, I will, but where I don't, then there's gonna be a specific reason for that. And today would be one such example. But the good news is if you are interested in using these more specialized types of materials, you can join our Facebook group uh, cosmetic raw materials for small brands and you might be able to share or split packs with another company also looking to use the same types of materials. So let me show you how easy it is to create sprayable gels and lotions when using the right types of materials and methods. The first thing I want to do is show you just how well they spray. So this is the gel product here and you could add all sorts of water soluble actives to this product. And you'll see it sprays in a beautiful pattern. So I'm going to start by creating the gel product. Uh, that's a lot easier product form. And I've got my phase A materials here. I'm just going to get this stirring. And to this I'm going to add my polymer. And this is simply to help create the gel form. Now it's really important that you allow the polymer plenty of time to hydrate before we neutralize so that we can get any clumps out and we end up with a beautifully smooth gel. I'm also going to add the really important material here. This is Nova Thix L10 polymer. And this particular material is what enables us to spray the product. It's a high shear thinning polymer, which means it will enable the product to set when it's at rest into a gel form or the lotion form. But it will, when it's put through high shear, the spray mechanism, break down into fine little droplets. So it is an essential material to get that nice spray pattern. Once we have dispersed our polymers adequately, we can then neutralize them. You'll see this is when they start to go clear. We can then add our solubilized fragrance and our preservative is also present here. Very important that you solubilize the fragrance in a solubilizer first so that you can make sure you maintain a nice clear solution. In the lab on the day you make it, you'll see there's a few little air bubbles, they will come out and of course when you're manufacturing in a larger vessel, you won't get the same sort of bubbles appear because the mixing blade will be well below the surface. This is of course in a small lab sample. We can then check the final pH and make any fine adjustments if we need to. These particular polymers work best when the pH is above 6.5. And you can now see how thick that has become. It of course will be a beautiful clear gel when those bubbles settle out. And very easily sprayed as well. So that's how we make a sprayable gel. So I've used a simple gelling polymer and the very special high shear thinning Novathix L10 polymer to enable it to spray on application. Now I'm going to show you how to create a lotion. I'm going to show you how to make this lovely sprayable cream. So as you can see it's got a cream viscosity when it's at rest but it sprays in a beautiful spray pattern because of the materials used. 
Now we do need to use special materials and equipment to achieve this product form, but as you can see, the results are worth it. The first thing we need to do is form our emulsion. So I have my water phase already prepared here. And then next I'm going to make a milky emulsion using Fluidy Feel Easy by Sepic. This is my oil phase here. And now I'm going to add the pre-combined oil phase to the water phase to form my milky emulsion. As you can see, so far we've created a very runny milk. Now it's important that we make this product in this way because the material that helps us form the stable emulsion needs high shear to combine. But the polymers we need to make it a sprayable lotion form need low shear only. So first we're going to add our carbamer to create our gel. And next we're going to add our Novathix L10 polymer. Now that material will also help increase the viscosity, but that's the material that's very important to get that beautiful wide spray pattern. Don't rush your polymers, they need to wet thoroughly before we do the neutralizing step. And you can see how thick our lotion has become just by neutralizing those polymers. So you end up with this beautiful lotion consistency that doesn't run when it's at rest but sprays in a beautiful wide spray pattern even at 10% lipid. So there you go, that's how easy it is to create sprayable gels and creams, but you do need special materials to enable them to be sprayable, but still stable. Now, just a word of caution, you can't rush a polymer. At the early stages, as you saw me do, I have thoroughly wetted them before I neutralized them. They still do need thorough stirring after the neutralizing step, but it must be low shear at this point. So you'll need to make sure you've got some paddle blades or side sweeper blades to ensure the product gets homogeneously mixed and turned over to ensure it's fully neutralized to get full viscosity and stabilizing benefits. You can of course add a variety of water soluble extracts to either of these formulation bases. Make sure that they don't contain electrolytes because these polymeric materials are electrolyte sensitive. But of course they enable you to create these fun sprayable gel and lotion forms where other materials just won't let that happen. Happy formulating!